Hello and thanks for listening. The following is the audio version of the book, You Must Be Born Again. Both a printed version and ebook version are available. To request either one free of charge, contact me at the email address listed here. There are additional footnotes and references included in the printed and ebook versions, so it may be worth your while if this topic interests you. This audiobook is broken into five parts. All five are in the playlist on the YouTube channel at Hope in Dark Times. Thanks again. Part 3 Born of Water and Spirit. Numerous individuals have arrived at the conclusion that the phenomenon of being born again occurs simultaneously with the acts of water baptism and more specifically, baptism with the Holy Spirit as demonstrated during events like the day of Pentecost and others. When someone displays the signs of being filled with the Holy Spirit, they are commonly regarded as having just undergone the process of being born of the Spirit. Consequently, the concept of being born again is directly linked to the transformed life in the present moment. However, the question arises, Does this precisely align with Jesus' original intent in his conversation with Nicodemus? If the scenario just described holds true, a multitude of questions inevitably arise without clear answers. For instance, if the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the concept of being filled with the Holy Spirit only commenced on the day of Pentecost, does that imply that all the faithful individuals from ancient times who lived and died in devotion to God died without undergoing the process of being born again? If so, does this mean they are excluded from the kingdom of God? In Hebrews chapter 11, the text mentions various historical figures who died in faith, demonstrating unwavering loyalty to their God. Towards the end of the chapter, the writer says, And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Hebrews 11:39 through 40. Within Hebrews 11:40, we discover the key that can help address the question concerning those who live before Christ, resurrection. The apostle Paul's primary objective becomes clear when we consider his statement in Philippians 3:10 through 11 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings becoming like him in death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. In perfect accordance with Jesus' words to Nicodemus, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. The Apostle Paul communicated a similar message. He stated in 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 53, I tell you this, brothers, Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. Can we discern the profound alignment between Jesus' teachings and Paul's expressions? It should now be clearer than ever that being born again, as elucidated by Jesus, encompasses far more than simple spiritual transformation within oneself in this present moment. While receiving the Holy Spirit is undeniably crucial, Jesus' message to Nicodemus conveys that to partake in the blessings of the kingdom of God a profound transformation is imperative. Whether this transformation pertains to resurrection from death or a transformation occurring in a person still living, the identical transformation takes place in all believers when Christ returns. What significance does Jesus assign to water in this context? He stated, Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. How does water fit into this equation? Starting with the ministry of John the Baptist, water baptism became a crucial element of the repentance and discipleship process. Although it's not frequently mentioned, Jesus' followers continued to undergo water baptism during his ministry. By the time of the day of Pentecost, the Apostle Peter conveyed a clear message to the attentive crowd. 
Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2.38 Peter was essentially reiterating the instructions he had received from his Lord. Jesus had instructed his disciples, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. The Apostle Paul draws a direct connection between baptism and resurrection in his writings. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. Colossians 2, 11 through 12. Paul conveys a similar message in another of his letters. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Romans 6, 3 through 4. The Apostle Paul was not the sole figure associating baptism with resurrection. The Apostle Peter also made this connection at first, Peter three eighteen through 22. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers, having been subjected to him. 